book of Psalms, verse 19, declares the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day utters speech, night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where his voice is not heard. Friends, we have, we have all sinned against our Creator. We have transgressed the law of God. But the good news is, the good news is God is merciful, God is gracious, and He's made a way of salvation, and that's through His Son, Jesus Christ. As John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes upon Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Look to Jesus Christ, repent of sin, trust Him as your Lord and your God, and you shall be saved, friends. Hey, can I ask you a question? Sure. God, who in Genesis 1.26 said, Let us make man in our image, and created us. We were created without sin. Everything God created was good, and yet we have sinned. We have fallen short of the glory of God. We've rebelled against God. we transgressed the law of God, and the wages of sin is death. But friends, here's the good news. The good news is that God has made a way of escape. God has made a way of salvation. As John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world. He so loved the world that He has not left us to die in our sin. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever, whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the good news of the Gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the one means by which we will escape the coming wrath, the due penalty of sin. It's through receiving God's love in His Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus, fully God, fully man, born of the Virgin Mary, crucified, buried, and resurrected on the third day. Resurrected on the third day, conquering sin and death. That's known as Easter. Jesus Christ is the one name under heaven, given among men, by which we must be saved, as the book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 12, declares. Jesus Christ alone can save us from our sins. As 1 Timothy 1.15 says, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And friends, that's amazing news. That's good news. For we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We have all transgressed the law of God. We have lied. We have stolen. We have cheated. We have blasphemed, taken God's name in vain. <laughs> we have committed adultery. We have murdered in our heart, if not with our hands, because the Bible is clear to hate your fellow human being is to have a murderous heart. Friends, we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death and death eternal. Death eternal. But the gift, the gift of God, the unmerited favor, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Friends, we must see our sin as God sees it and turn from our sin looking unto Jesus. On the cross, the Lord Jesus hung between God, holy, 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 and mankind sinful. And before he died, he said these three words in John 19, verse 30, it is finished. God bless you, ma'am. It is finished. He finished the payment for sin. And as we repent and confess Jesus Christ as Lord, we shall be saved. As Roman 10, Romans 10, 9 says, If any man confess Jesus Christ as Lord and believe in their heart that God has raised him from the dead, they shall be saved. But it's in Jesus and Jesus alone that there is salvation. It's in Jesus and Jesus alone that there is hope of forgiveness of sins. We must turn from sin unto Jesus Christ in faith. As Jesus said in John 14, verse 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Those are the words of Jesus regarding the narrow path to heaven. He said, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life, and that no man comes to the Father, meaning heaven, but by or through Jesus. Friends, there is one name, the book of Acts chapter 4 verse 12 says, there is one name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved, and it's the name of Jesus. Now, not the Jesus of Islam, who is but a prophet and not God. Not the Jesus of Catholicism, who is perpetually re-crucified and served up in a bread and a piece of bread and a cup in the Mass. But friends, the Jesus, 
who died once for all, conquering sin and death, and rose again on the third day. The Jesus that sits at the right hand of God the Father is the one mediator between God and men. The only true Jesus. The one name under heaven, given among men, by which we must be saved. Jesus and Jesus alone can save us from our sins. Our religious deeds will not save us. Our religious works will not save us. Our religion will not save us. Our church will not save us. Your mosque will not save you. Your temple cannot save you. Friends, all of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, says Isaiah 64, 6 in God's Word. All that we would do with our hands is tainted. They're as filthy rags before God who is holy, holy, holy. Salvation is not something we can earn, not something we can gain through religion. Salvation is through Jesus Christ and Jesus alone. As Jesus said in John 14, verse 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Friends, it's like this. There may be a great massive number of people walking across the street illegally. God bless you. Illegally. But that doesn't make it safe, right? There's a great massive number of people trying to make it to heaven through religion, but that doesn't make it safe. The path to life is narrow and few shall find it. The path to life is through Jesus Christ. As Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Many people, when it comes to life and death and eternity, they step off the curb into eternity trusting in religion. Just like some people today stepping off the curb trusting in the goodness of their fellow man walking against the light. But friends, our fellow man is sinful. Our fellow man is errant. What if they look down to check the radio? People are going to die right here today. Friends, don't step off the curb until the light changes and don't step off the curve into eternity and death outside of Jesus Christ. For there is one name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and the wages of sin is death. But the gift, the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. God bless you. And so friends, as you waited for that light and you stepped off and it said, walk, look unto Jesus. Trust in Jesus. Don't walk against the light. God loves you, brother. Oh, amen. You take care. God bless. And so, friends, yes, God loves us. God loves us. He so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes upon Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Salvation is in the person of Jesus. Salvation is the repentance and confession of Jesus Christ as Lord. The love of God is manifest unto sinful mankind through Jesus Christ. Jesus, fully God, fully man. Jesus, born of the Virgin Mary. Jesus, crucified, resurrected, resurrected on the third day. Jesus, the one name under heaven, given among men by which we must be saved. Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by Him. Jesus, the only one that has conquered sin and death. Jesus, the only one that's risen from the dead. And friends, He rose from the dead that He might save us. Now there are those who would walk against the light, stepping across into the street where the light is still red. But friends, don't step into eternity where the light is red. Look to Jesus Christ, the light of the world, the only Savior, the one name under heaven given among men by which you must be saved. Look to Jesus and be saved. Doing an awesome job. We're from Corbin University. Oh, super. And you're super. doing awesome. Oh, well, Give it up. Like the, fact, the fact that God's called you to do this, like, kudos to you. Oh, crazy. it's it's my joy and privilege. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So well, God bless you, ladies. I just want to encourage you. Yeah, yeah. we'll press yeah. on there. Yeah, yeah you yeah. take care. I graduated from Corbin. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here, here's my card. Thank you so much. We're a pastor out in Beaverton now. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. God bless you, ladies. Take care. And so, folks, what a beautiful day God has given us to celebrate life. As Psalm 19 says, the heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament shows His handiwork day into day. 
Day into day, he utters speech. Everywhere we look, we see the glory of God, whether we look at the heavens or we look at the earth, on the macro level, on the micro level, everywhere we look, we see the glory of God. We see the handprint of God. We see the design of God. We see the power and omniscience of God. Friends, we are creatures before a holy God and sinful creatures at that. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But friends, the good news is, the good news is that sinners can be saved. As 1 Timothy 1.15 says, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Again, the bad news, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and the wages of sin is death. The good news, the good news is that the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Look to Jesus Christ. Look to Jesus Christ and live. Jesus, fully God, fully man, born of the Virgin Mary, crucified, buried, and resurrected on the third day. Jesus, the one name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Jesus, the way and the truth and the life, the only means of entering into heaven. Our works, our religious deeds are filthy rags before a holy God. Isaiah 64, 6 says, all of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Friends, our goodness is a facade and it cannot save us. All that we have done is tainted with sin, but Jesus and Jesus alone was without sin, and yet he laid down his life for sinners. This is the love of God, as John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, whosoever, red, black, yellow, white, sinners all in God's sight, that whosoever believes upon the Son shall not perish, meaning suffer the due penalty of sin in hell forever, but shall have everlasting life, meaning reside and abide under the love and grace and mercy of God forever and ever and ever. Friends, look to Jesus Christ and live. Look to Jesus Christ and find life and life abundant, the forgiveness of sins. And yes, we have all sinned. We've transgressed the law of God. We have lied, stolen, cheated, blaspheme God's name, using it as a curse word, blaspheme the name of God's Son, using it as a curse word, looked with lust, fornicated, committed adultery, sodomy. We have all sinned, friends, one way or another, or a multitude of ways. And the wages of sin is death. God is a just judge, and He is angry with the wicked every day, and yet He is also loving and merciful as we turn from our sin in what the Bible calls repentance and confess Jesus Christ as Lord, there is salvation, friends. Look to Jesus Christ. Look to Jesus Christ and live. Because before the name of Jesus Christ, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess Him as Lord. As Acts 4.12 says, there is one name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. And it's the name of Jesus. One name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Saved from what? Saved from the wrath of God, the due penalty of sin. Now that's the bad news. That's the bad news because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But here's the good news. The good news is that in God's grace, He has made a way of salvation. As 1 Timothy 1.15 says, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Christ Jesus, fully God, fully man, born of the Virgin Mary, without sin, went to the cross to die for sinners to save us from our sins. But we must repent, turn from our sin, and look to Jesus Christ in faith. As Romans 10, 9 says, if any man will confess Jesus Christ as Lord and believe in their heart that God has raised him from the dead, they shall be saved. That's the good news of salvation by grace through faith in the person of Jesus Christ. Even as John 3, 16 says, that famous verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the good news of the Gospel. That's the good news of God's love for sinners like you and I. 
Now he loves us so much that he's not going to leave us sinners. As we see our sin rightly and turn from our sin and look to Jesus Christ in faith, we will be what the Bible calls born again, made a new creature from the inside out through the power of the Spirit of God. As Jesus said, you must be born again and you'll not enter the kingdom of God. And it's by grace through faith in Jesus Christ that we are born again. It's by grace through faith in Jesus Christ that we are made a new creature, that our sins are washed away, that we are declared just and holy, just as if we had never sinned. Again, as 1 Timothy 1.15 says, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world, came into the world to save sinners, came into the world to save men and women like you and I, men and women that have sinned, men and women that have transgressed the law of God, have blasphemed, lied, stolen, fornicated, committed adultery, sodomized, all of these sins Christ can save us from. But we must see our sin as sinful, confess our sin as sinful, and turn from our sin to Jesus Christ, confessing Him as Lord and following Him as Lord. As Romans 10, 9 says, if any man confess Jesus Christ as Lord, and believe in the heart that God has raised him from the dead, he shall be saved. That is the wonderful news, the good news, the incredible news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, red, black, yellow, white, all sinners in his sight, that whosoever believes upon the Son shall not perish, meaning go to hell, to suffer the due penalty of sin, but will have everlasting life, meaning go to heaven, to be under God's love, God's grace, God's mercy forever and ever. That's the love of God, that He doesn't leave us in our sins. God's love is not, not found in Him leaving us in sin and saying, oh, it's no big deal, come into heaven anyway. No, God's love is found in the person of Jesus Christ. And as we repent of sin, meaning turn from sin and look to Jesus, we will be what the Bible calls born again, made a new creature. All, the old has passed. Behold, all things have been made new. We no longer love our sin. We no longer love to take God's name and use it as a filth word. We no longer love to get drunk and to fornicate and commit adultery and blaspheme, use God's name as a filth word. We're recreated from the inside out. That's the good news of the gospel. The power of the gospel is to save you from hell eternally, but to save you from sin even now and make you what the Bible calls a saint. Not one that is without sin, but one whose sins have been forgiven. And one that no longer loves sin. One that loves righteousness and is learning by the grace of God to walk in righteousness, to walk in the light of the Word. Now this side of heaven will never be perfect, and yet those who love the Lord are not comfortable with sin. Those who love the Lord are not comfortable continuing in sin, but are growing rather in the grace and knowledge of the Lord, growing in righteousness, and that's what the Bible calls sanctification, being washed with the water of the Word of God. That's the good news of the gospel, is that God saves us from the penalty of sin and hell, and God saves us from the power of from the power of sin even now. Now I was talking to a man at McDonald's a few hours ago, and the man was obviously drunk. The man obviously is living a lifestyle of drunkenness, a slave to alcohol. Very tragic. He didn't have enough money for lunch. And so we got some lunch together, and then we were talking, and, and he knew. He knew where he was at before God. He knew that his sins had a grip on him and that he would die in his sin unless God interjected. But friends, the good news is God can save him and God can save you and I. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We have all sinned. We have all transgressed God's commands, God's laws. And yet the grace of God, the grace of God is found in Jesus Christ. The mercy of God is found in Jesus Christ. The love of God is found in Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes upon Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But friends, outside of Jesus Christ, there is no love. Outside of Jesus Christ, there is no grace. 
outside of Jesus Christ there is no mercy. Outside of Jesus Christ there is only the certain condemnation to come. The due penalty of sin. God's love is manifest in His Son. There is one name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. That's the book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 12. One name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. John 14, 6. I think some of you know it. Look to Jesus, because in Jesus alone there is grace and there is mercy and there is love. Look to Jesus Christ and live. Well, God bless you. You pray, sir. Take care. Look to Jesus Christ and live. In Jesus alone there is salvation. In Jesus alone there is hope. In Jesus alone there is forgiveness. In Jesus alone will sinners like us leave this world and enter into heaven to come. In Jesus alone will sinners like us avoid the wrath of God and come into Jesus Christ, heaven, the entrance. He is the door. The gentleman quoted Genesis 1-1, or he said Genesis 1-1 anyway. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Amen. He did. And then in Genesis 1-26, God said, Let us make man in our image. And we are created in the image of God with an eternal soul. And yet, in Genesis chapter 3, mankind sinned. Adam and Eve, our corporal heads, our parents, if you will, our great-great-great-great-grandparents, sinned. And we have inherited their sin nature, a rebellious nature against God, our Creator. And from the youngest of ages, we begin to sin. Your mother and father didn't have to teach you to lie. It came natural. I have four children. I didn't have to teach any of them to lie. It came natural. You don't have to teach a child to steal a cookie. It comes natural. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We inherited that sin nature from Adam and Eve, and we act upon it as soon as possible, as soon as we are cognitively able to. We I act like upon that lot. sin nature. What I and friends, friends, the wages of sin is death, eternal death under the wrath of God. But the gift of God, the gift of God is eternal life in Christ oh, Jesus our Lord. But you must repent. You must repent. The gentleman asked, what must he do to stop sinning? He must repent. To repent is to see your sin as God sees it, to hate it as God hates it, and turn from it, looking to Jesus Christ and confessing Him as Lord. How do you do that? How do you do that? The Word of God. The Word of God says, faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. The Scriptures are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. That's what the Bible says about the Bible. And so, young man, young man, sit under the preaching of the Word. Read the Bible. I once loved my sin like you as well. I once would smile and laugh and mock and rejoice in my sin. And I would have died and gone to hell except for the grace of God. In 1990, I joined the United States Marine Corps. Young man, I'm answering your question. And I read for the first time the Word of God. And in the Word of God, I found that God is holy, holy, holy. And that I'm a sinner before a holy God, my holy Creator. And that Jesus Christ is the way and the truth and the life. And that no man comes to the Father but by Him. And so the answer on how to... Thank you, sir. God bless you. The, the answer, how does a sinner repent and be saved is this. Open up the Word of God. Read the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. The Scriptures are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Look to the Word of God. This is the revelation of God Himself. It's not written by man, but rather by inspired men. Men moved along, carried along, as the Bible says, Theonustos, God breathed. This is the God-breathed book. God's revelation of Himself that we might know Him, that we might love Him, that we might serve Him, and that we might be saved through faith in His Son. And so God has given us, God has given us a revelation of Himself that we would know Him. And when we come to know God, what's the first thing we think? What's the first thing we feel? Friends, it's the fear of God. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of God, says Proverbs Chapter 1, verse 7. Why is the beginning of wisdom fear? 
Because the beginning of wisdom, spiritual knowledge, true knowledge, is to have a knowledge of God, holy, 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 and a knowledge of self before a holy God, sinful, and to cry out, woe is me, I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips amongst a people of unclean lips. Thus the beginning of wisdom is the fear of God, to tremble before God, to know that you are undone, to know that you're already condemned, and except for the grace of God, except for the mercy of God, you will most certainly perish in your sins. And so friends, look to the Holy Scriptures. Look to the God of the Holy Scriptures. Look to God holy, 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 and tremble. Experience the beginning of wisdom, fear, and in fear don't run from God, but run to God through His Son, Jesus Christ. The way and the truth and the life, no man comes to the Father but by Him. Don't retreat to religion. Religion cannot save you. It is Jesus and Jesus alone. There is one name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved and it's the name of Jesus Christ the person of Jesus Christ the person fully God fully man born of the Virgin Mary crucified buried and resurrected on the third day conquering sin and death opening up the gates of heaven for all those who will repent and confess him as Lord friends look unto Jesus and be saved again as John 3 36 says he who believes on the Son has everlasting life. He who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides upon him. That's either good news or incredibly scary news. He who believes upon the Son has everlasting life. That's, that's incredible news. That's good news. If you have believed upon Jesus, you have everlasting life. The certain, certain hope of heaven. The certain hope of abiding under God's love. But if you have not if you have not believed upon the Son, the wrath of God already abides upon you. For we have already been judged as sinners. It's not a question of have we sinned. It's not a question of are we worthy of heaven. We're not worthy of heaven. We're worthy of our wages. And the wages of sin is death and death eternal under God's wrath and hell. But friends, the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus the Lord. Look to Jesus Christ. Look to Jesus Christ, fully God, fully man, crucified, buried, and resurrected on the third day. Look to Jesus Christ, the one means of grace and mercy and love. Look to Jesus Christ, the one name under heaven given among men by which you must be saved.